Hello, hope you're doing great. Welcome to a new video. This video will present ways to read and understand notation in geometry. Comparing mathematics to a language, it also behaves in a way that observing examples of it and identifying the tools it provides are a step in order to create something with it. Notation in general allows to write mathematical statements in a short and clear way, identify things, visualize statements, and relate mathematical statements with geometrical drawings. In order for notation to accomplish its purpose, it is useful to establish notation and define it. This is an important step because the use of notation changes depending on the source, and sometimes its meaning can be unclear. Hence, this video as other videos addressing notation on this channel will serve to also present subtle style choices for the notation in this channel. Overall, although definitions and notation can help make things clear as always, some things may only make sense after time, practice and experience. Points will be denoted by uppercase letters. Once an uppercase letter is used to denote a point, it cannot be used to denote another point. Sometimes two different uppercase letters, each denoting a point, may denote the same point. Briefly speaking, a point can be denoted by two different ways. This circumstance is perfectly fine with geometric notation. As an example of this circumstance, while practicing geometry, it may happen that two points are constructed and denoted each one by a different uppercase letter. Next, it is proven that the two points are the same, so a point becomes denoted by two different ways. In this circumstance, to produce a later discussion, only one way to denote the point will be kept through the rest of the discussion. In some cases, there may be many points to denote and there may not be enough letters or using too many different letters make the discussion harder. Hence, the same letter may be used for different points while adding it a subscript or apostrophes. Lines will be denoted by lowercase cursive letters. Similarly as with points, a line may be denoted by two different ways. Straight lines divide the plane they lie in two regions. These regions may be called sides of the line. Another fancy word for calling these regions is half plane. It is sometimes important to know if given two things they lie on the same half plane with respect to a straight line or not. Segments will be denoted by two uppercase letters corresponding to their endpoints under a horizontal bar. Hence the expression in red may be read as segment AB. Sometimes the word segment or other word may be kept written before the former expression itself. This would be to stress the context and characteristics of the segment. Segments also divide the plane they lie into regions. For this, first the segment is extended, or using a fancy word, produced from both points. Then the half planes of a segment are the half planes of the straight line when the segment is produced. On this video, the term angle will be reserved for straight angles. When using the following notation, it must be supposed that the angle being denoted is a straight angle unless stated otherwise. Angles will be denoted by the symbol angle followed by one or three uppercase letters. The style of only one uppercase letter will only be used if it is clear the only angle whose vertex is at the point denoted by that uppercase letter. Here is a drawing showing an example where this notation would be ambiguous. Most of the time this style of notation will be deprecated, even though it may get used. It is common for two or more angles to have the same point as a vertex. Also, if two angles have the same point as a vertex, one of the sides of the angle is also side of the other angle, and they do not overlap, the angles are called adjacent. In order to avoid ambiguity, it will be more often used the style of three uppercase letters to name an angle. The purpose of the three letters is to denote the point of the vertex of the angle by the middle letter, and the other letters denote points on different sides of the angle. To remember this, it may be used the following mechanical mnemonic. Start with the first point. Draw the segment from the first point to the second point. This is the vertex. Draw the segment from the vertex to the third point. In the next drawing, there will be two examples of this technique. First, start with the point A, then draw segment AC, draw segment CF. This is the angle ACF. 
the vertex is in the point C. It is important to mention that the points on the sides of the angles are not unique and do not have order. Hence, the angle ACF is equal to the angle FCA. Also, in this drawing, angle AEF is equal to the angle AEB. The second example of the mnemonic starts with point A. Then draw segment AF. Draw segment FC. This is the angle AFC. The vertex is in the point F. There is only one ambiguity remaining when denoting angles. Given an angle ABC, always two angles are constructed, as the drawing shows. Unless stated otherwise, when an angle is named, it will be such that it does not lie on the two half planes of one of its sides. An equivalent idea is that when naming an angle unless stated otherwise, it will be such that it measures less or equal the sum of two right angles. Figures are denoted by a list of uppercase letters. Each letter stands for each vertex of the figure. However, Triangles have three vertices, and hence triangles are denoted by a list of three letters. In order to not mix the notation of angles and triangles, triangles are denoted by a small triangle followed by three uppercase letters. While naming a triangle, the order of its vertices is irrelevant. That is because by any way three points are listed at the end, every pair of points within the three points get joined by a segment. Figures with more sides or vertices than three are denoted only by a list of their vertices. There will not be used any special symbol to address them. Vertices in a figure that are joined by a side are called adjacent vertices. Sides that pass through a common vertex are called adjacent sides. Segments that join two vertices that are not adjacent are called diagonals. The order of vertices when naming figures is important. If the order of the vertices is changed, a different figure could be constructed. Following, there are some examples of different figures that can be constructed using the same points as vertices. To state that two given figures are congruent, it will be used this symbol, congruent two. The notation of congruence of two figures is subtle. The expression can be read as triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. The notation will state the way by which the figures match each other. That is, in the notation of congruence, the order of the vertices of the figures is always relevant even for triangles. Each pair of consecutive letters most denote corresponding sides of the figures and each triplet of consecutive letters most name corresponding angles of the figures. Apart from the rules of the notation of congruence is that easily gives a lot of information of congruent figures. If a side or angle is chosen in one of the figures, the notation gives the name of the matching part in the second figure. If the triangle ABC is congruent to the triangle EDF given the side BC, then the sides BC and DF are equal. Also, given the angle BCA, the angles BCA and DFE are equal. If the pentagon ABCDE is congruent to the pentagon UBWXY, given the side EA, the sides EA and YU are equal. Also, given the angle XYU, the angles XYU and DEA are equal. That would be all for the first video about notation in geometry. Hope this will help to make studying geometry easier for you. Do not forget to leave questions or comments if you want. Thanks for watching.